if you had to measure all the portions, just like the, the whole Weight Watchers program, things like that, if you're counting all of that, it's just, it's too much for me, too time consuming. I would have never done it. Ashley, how did you find Carnival? Hey, Dave. Um, well, I actually found Carnivore from introduction from my friend. Um, he had, we had been talking a lot about the different uh, struggles and different uh, things that I had going on as we got closer in a men's group from church. And he just asked me, he goes, have you ever heard of Carnivore? And I said, no, what's Carnivore? So he described a little bit and um, got me kind of interested and very, very curious. Um, and so I did started doing a lot of research towards it, but my intrigue in the carnivore and what he was saying went back to really when I first was diagnosed with type two diabetes, um, which was um, total of probably about eight years ago. And um, at the time I had no idea what diabetes was. I mean, zero ideas. I'd, I'd heard the word, I knew it was bad. I didn't know anything more than that. I didn't know life threatening. I didn't know the end results of it. I was 40 years old and it was just that time where I felt like oh, I was getting older. I should probably go to the doctor and get some blood work done. And it was in the back of my mind, but I started feeling really, really terrible. And um, um, I had gotten up to where I was my heaviest weight, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 260 pounds. And um, um, all of a sudden, after a course of about two months, I started losing a considerable amount of weight. And I didn't do anything. I wasn't changing my diet. I was still drinking tons of Dr. Peppers every single day, um, not exercising. Just I was like, why am I losing this weight? And to be honest, I thought I had cancer something. I was like, there's something wrong internally. That's why I'm losing so much weight. I need to go to the doctor. I finally convinced myself to go to the doctor. And that's when we had blood work run. And um, when we did that, my A1C, which, I've, which is, of course, now the marker that I know very well for uh, type 2 diabetes, my A1C was 11.1, um, which is very high, uh, extremely high. Um, and my cholesterol was through the roof. Uh, um, in fact, I, they couldn't even measure my total cholesterol because it was so high, but they did get my triglyceride measurement and it was over 1300, which is absolutely off the chart. Um, yeah, normal range is zero to 150. I see the look on your face. Yeah, it's, it was high. Now, I do, I do asterisk that a little bit because that was eight years ago. It was before I knew anything about blood work or anything. I don't know that I went into that completely fasted. Um, I really don't remember. So to be honest, that may have been elevated, but it was still very, very high. My cholesterol obviously still had it, major, some major issues. And my A1C, that's a three-month average. So that didn't happen from what I ate the night before or whatever. That was, that's in a three-month average marker. So it was extremely high. So. Doctor was very concerned. Uh, obviously, he was. Uh, he immediately wanted to prescribe some medicines, and and that's where I, just based on my upbringing and kind of my beliefs, I just I didn't want to go on medicine right away. And I said, "Is there any other way? Can I change my diet? Can I exercise? I've never done anything else to help myself." And of course, he said, "Yeah, diet, diet and exercise are important, but you have to go on these medicines. That's that's out, you're too far gone at this point. You have to do that." So he prescribed medicines. Um, I ended up not picking him up, but he also set me up with a uh, nutritionist. And so we had an appointment with a nutritionist. And at that time, my wife had been going through some difficulties of her own and really done a lot of research and isolated down to a gluten uh, intolerance and uh, likely celiac. But at that time, there wasn't a lot of um, a lot of awareness about that or it was just kind of catching on a little bit. But she'd done a ton of research. And I knew a little bit from her journey about that. And so when I went into the nutritionist and we started talking about the solutions and she started recommending probably the standard American nutrition way, just eat sugars in moderation. You can have this, you can have that, but don't eat a whole package of Oreo, just eat one or two. Um, and I was confused. I looked at her, I said, well, why wouldn't I just cut it all out? If sugars and carbs are the main reason, why wouldn't I just cut it out? Oh, you can't do that. You have to have some carbs. You have to have, it's okay to have some sugars. You just have to do it in moderation. And then just out of an inkling, I, I said, well, well, tell me about gluten. What about gluten? And the nutritionist said, well, what is gluten? So right then I was like, okay, I'm not buying into any of this. I don't feel that she's a professional and, you know, and her, I, like, how do you not know about that? Again, this was eight years ago, but that really led me down a path of I've got to get more opinions on this and I've got to figure this out. So I went to a, a very trusted uh, chiropractor who I've been seeing at the time who's very into natural healing and um, oils and different things. And um, I said, hey, 
give me this, give me this goat. Am I going to die tomorrow? What can we do? And he said, no, let's see. He explained it in a way that I've never heard before, but he talked about how your liver is incredibly regenerative and it, it's, it's healing. If you can, if you can take care of it, it will heal. It will replenish itself. And right now your liver, he told me my liver is sick. My pancreas is sick and uh, uh, my kidneys are sick. And it goes, once you can fix your, your liver, the other two organs won't have to work quite as hard and they'll start to fix themselves. And then you can get, get that back in shape. He said, but it's going to take time. It's going to be, you know, strict diet change. So, okay, I'm in, what do I need to do? And so my wife had already kind of figured out the solution. And back then we started on a paleo diet and uh, which is very similar. It's a, a real elimination of carbs and sugars. But at that time I didn't even know what a carb or sugar was. So my wife had to tell me, uh, a potato is a carb. You can't have that. And uh, bread, you can't have that. And pasta, you can't have that. And I just, I was mind blown. I'm like, what do you mean? I felt so restricted. I couldn't have anything. What am I going to do? I didn't want to give any of that up, but I was scared. So thankfully, you know, that was enough to push me to a very strict, if I knew it was in there, I got rid of it. I didn't, I didn't cheat for three months. I really did good. But what that did is when I went back in for blood work in three months, my A1C uh, actually dropped down to 5.7. So it went from 11.1 .1 in three months time to 5.7. And what that proved to me um, was that diet really has an impact on these, these scores. And I was just learning about diabetes, but I was like, hey, if I can impact it that much in, in three months, ah, oh, this is a piece of cake. And, uh, of course, what did I do to go reward myself for doing such a great job for three months? I went and had uh, pizza and an ice cream. And so, you know, that's just, again, my ignorance, not knowing what what it's all about. Right. I've learned a lot over these last eight years. So, um, you know, what turned into a reward and I can do this occasionally. I'll do it once a month. I'll have a cheat. And that became once a week. And then I was back to pretty much my old eating habits and everything kind of came back. And I was at that point, you know, using a glucometer to prick my finger and measure my blood. I was, I knew that, that the blood sugar levels were high again, but I just kept saying in the back of my head, uh, I'll fix it later. I'll fix it later. Or every time I'd get motivated, it'd be two or three days. And then I'd, I'd cheat again with something else. And so it's very hard to break that sugar addiction, which now I know is a sugar addiction. And, um, that was very, very challenging to me. So I've gotten back to the point where my, my, I knew my A1C was bad. I knew my diabetes was going going crazy again. I wasn't feeling good again. And, and that's about the time that, that my friend uh, interacted with me. And we were talking about that. And he, that's when he asked me about the carnivore diet. So I was like, okay, let me do some more research. And um, he, he turned me on to, uh, of course, Dr. Barry. Um, I went on YouTube and I started uh, uh, watching all of Dr. Barry's uh, videos and everything like that. And was fascinating to me and I love meat. I feel like, Hey, this is something I could do. So started on, I, I decided this is something I'm probably going to do, but it was one of those, I'll wait till after the holidays. It was November, it was December, but I, I did start cutting back on my carbs and sugars because I knew that, you know, was the main thing from my experience previous. Yeah. So I first started carnivore, um, finally made it on mind. I was going to do it all in, in February, 2023. Um, and that was, just after I'd done about two, three months of research, I was, I was ready to make, make an effort. I'd lined up my plans. I'd gotten my meat bought and I was ready to, to, to go all in and do this. So I uh, started on that path and did really, really well for the first month. Um, second month I did really, I really didn't cheat very much at all. If I, again, if I knew it, I was really being strict. My wife was supporting of me. Um, and, and that was fantastic. And uh, we just, I just really tried to eat a ribeye. Um, I had tried to eat hamburger. I had tried to eat just pretty much beef, eggs, butter, and bacon, just from the basic level of what I knew about the, the carnivore diet. And it was about uh, two months later um, when Kerry released his, uh, maybe three months, but when Kerry released his 30 day video, um, that's really what took that motivation to the next level. I saw that. I saw all the healing that happened to him. I was experiencing a lot of that too. And I, it, when I saw his videos, like, yeah, that was me too. I'm getting up in the mornings, like with a ton of energy. Um, my, I just feel completely different. It's amazing. It's not just the, the inside work, all these other things are happening to me. And I just, the pound, the poundage was just dropping off. I was losing weight. That was huge. So I got super motivated there. And then my brother, 
we're called the Carnivore Brothers for a reason. I'm Ashley. My brother is Rhett. Uh, and if you've seen our channel, um, he's on there with me a lot. And, and uh, But he reached out to me not knowing anything about this. And he had seen a picture on Facebook of me. And he's, he called me one night and he said, dude, what are you doing? Like, you look incredible. What's going on? And so I just got all excited and I told him he's my brother. I wasn't I, up until that point. I was kind of shy about talking what, about what it was because everybody else that I talked to about said, you're crazy. This is nuts. What are you doing? You're going to have a heart attack, all this, the same stuff that we hear. But not my brother. My brother was like, tell me, I'm doing, I, he goes, I'm, I'm over 300 pounds right now. I've got to do something to change my life. I'm like, here's what I'm doing. So um told him all about it and it was funny because he jumped all in i think the next day like he, he didn't even do all the research he's like you tell me what to do i'm in i'm doing it so um it was remarkable but we had a great time it was good because i live in texas he lives in washington and um so we we were a long ways apart but it was a great reconnection a great conversation we talked to each other text each other almost every day about it encouraged each other motivated each other and um um, then when, when, uh, Carrie from Homestead house started, um, to put together the information about this 24 hour live stream who put it out there, he's like, Hey, if you have a YouTube channel, put it out there, I'll, I'll invite you on. If you have a testimony, put it on there. And I started hearing this and I told Red, I said, we're going to start a YouTube channel. And Red's like, I don't know. I said, okay, well, we'll think about it. And, uh, anyway, we got closer and closer to the date and I called him up. I said, I just signed us up. We're called carnivore brothers. You're in it with me. <laughs> you, you don't have to post videos if you don't want to, but we're doing it together because you're my motivation as well. And so that's why we started the carnivore brothers channel. And it really was just a motivation to tell our story because we, at that point, Rhett was already starting to see a lot of weight loss. He struggled, struggled with depression and anxiety saw that lift almost immediately to the point where he didn't even really want to talk about it. He didn't believe it. He was like, is this real? Like, I don't feel my depression anymore. My anxiety attacks are gone. And so it took a while before he even wanted to start talking about it. Um, but we're just seeing great results. And so it was, it was fantastic. And uh, the more we've got into it, the more, um, I guess, vocal I've become about it. And uh, I'm telling as many people as I can about it. We use our YouTube channel to try and document our story. Um, and, uh, hopefully share that with others. Well, immediately my parents reached out to me. You look great. Rhett's lost this crazy amount of weight. What's going on? What are you guys doing? And I told my mom about it when I first started and she told me, uh, she swears she didn't say I was crazy, but she said, Oh, this is, this is nuts. I don't think you should do this. And she gave me all the, you know, you got to eat your veggies. You got to do all this. So six months or so down the road after we're seeing these results, she says, okay, tell me about it. I need to lose some weight too. Dad needs to lose some weight too. Let's go. And uh, they jumped in and they started doing it as well. And immediately they started, my mom and dad, they both have lost about 35. Well, see, dad's down 40 pounds. Mom's down 35 pounds. They look and feel terrific. Um, and that's the biggest thing. The energy level is totally different. Um, they're 70, both 70, mom's 78, dad's 79. And they just, it's, it's like they've got a new lease on life, um, and especially my dad. He was to that point where he was just fine with sitting down in the, the reclining chair and just doing nothing and just, you know, getting old and growing old. And that was that was going to be his life. And now, oh, my word, he's out there. He's doing the yard work. He's he's he, it's just amazing seeing the difference. He's just high energy and and got a new lease on life now. So um, love seeing that. And yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it was it was it was fun. It was fun, and um, we've had several others. So now that we both Rhett and I have done it for over a year, um, I've got actually a twin brother as well, and um, he's he started on that. He's now um, two two months in, and three months in maybe. Wow, he's it, time time flies, but he's feeling feeling great. My sister's doing it. Her husband's doing it, and uh, it's just it's really kind of been fun to watch the whole family. Um, just the healing that we've seen in the family from a lot of things that uh, uh, through diet. And so it, it's just proven beyond a shadow of doubt to me that there's some amazing healing powers to putting the right nutrition in your body. You know, the, this is the awesome thing because this is like the kind of the network marketing power of carnivore, yeah. you know, like you've got all these people in your family on it. Right. And then, 
each of those family members go and tell two or three people and then it just spreads like this, right? That's right. That's right. And what's wild about it and what I wish was almost more of a big flashing neon sign was the, the other um, off scale victories that a lot of people have that, you know, you don't really see that, but the weight is what people pick up on, right? If you're really heavy, my brother was 300 pounds. So when he started, when he dropped hundred pounds, people were noticing what in the world are you doing? Right. That's noticeable. But he and I will both tell you to this day, it's not just the weight. It's how good we feel. It's the, all the other things for him, the depression, and anxiety, um, and he'll tell his story. I think he's going to be, he's, he's about to actually leave on a journey tomorrow to kind of get back on, on track, but he fell off the wagon a little bit and uh, I'll let him at some point tell the story, but just briefly, I can tell you that going backwards and he said he had his first anxiety attack that he's had in a long time. He, his depression came back. There were several things that, um, he's like, I know the difference now. He goes, I know this is, this is terrible and I've got to get back on 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 the carnivore diet and so uh, he starts a journey tomorrow to uh, to get that going again so super excited for him and praying that he does well uh, on that and i know he will so, mm. so hopefully yeah. we'll have a story to tell about that again here soon yeah um uh, and as as bad as those things can be when those you know those the the anxiety or the depression or the other the other issues that we have in the past come back I guess they they can they can be good kind of guardrails because it can be yeah. kind of like okay yeah do you do you really want to go back here or should yeah. we should we get back on the carnival path? <laughs> well, you're exactly right. That's kind of the fun thing about it. You actually get to feel those differences, and so now I'm I feel like I'm much more in tune with my body. And um, you know when I do go back and I test, we had some. Um, organic dried mangoes that zero sugar everything was great and i had those the other day oh they tasted great but it was funny the next day how much gas i had <laughs> i mean it was like the bloating though i could feel it in my stomach and I was, that was the only thing different i had and so i would have never associated fruit with that um prior to this right and so so many of those things were able to kind of see what worked what doesn't work but that's um you know for him going back to um, eating the, I mean, he was still eating decent, but he was not eating, um, you know, fully strict the way he was before. And he could he immediately notice a difference. For you, um, you've had a lot of improvements um, and, and coupled with the weight loss. But like when you think about those non-scale victories, on a practical level, how is your, just your normal day-to-day -day different now than it was before? I think the biggest thing is I just, I feel so good. Um, I just feel like learning more. I feel like working out some, I feel like ex explaining what I've experienced to other people. Um, I'm super, super excited and uh, blessed that I have been able to be involved kind of in the background on the, uh, the healing humanity uh, documentary and uh, working with uh, Carrie and Adam and the team on that and uh, super excited about some of the stuff that I'm able to do in the background because I really feel like this is going to change a lot of um, hopefully how how medicine is practiced in America um, I'm really on the diabetes um, um, education path to try and really help that out so I love what dr. Barry is now doing with the uh, American Diabetes Society and starting that and the uh, focus that he's got uh, on that, I'm just, I'm really seeing a path forward and I want to be a part of it. And so um, I think that that's where my, I've got a real passion about it now. And because I've seen the results and I've seen, I don't want to say it's easy, but when people struggle all of their lives and I keep hearing these stories of all the medicine that, they, that they've dealt with, the type two diabetes for years and decades uh, of, of the struggles that they've had, and to find out that people can reverse and fix a lot of that come off of their meds within months, sometimes weeks, um, like that, that where they feel that impact, they feel the difference, those aches, those pains, all of that is, is healing and going away. You know, I just, I want to be a voice. I want to be a voice for it. And so that's really, I think, a big change in, in my life. And it is still hard. I work for a company that works with, um, uh, with it within the, the medical field I, I recruit doctors and uh, that's 
part of my role. Um, but uh, it's also been very fascinating to have a lot of sidebar conversations as well um, in that being in that industry. And I just think that that is something that is really, really remarkable to hear some inside takes off the record, if you will, uh, from the clinician aspect. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I, I would be very tempted to kind of go, hey, Doc, can I just talk to you about something for a second? <laughs> I have to several of my trusted doctors who I've worked with for many years. I have, and I, I've said, Hey, tell me what you think about this. And so we've had some, some off the record conversations, you know, we're going to, they're, 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 they still have to practice the way they have to practice. Um, so that's why I'm just so thankful to some of the brave doctors who are stepping out and, uh, you know, trying to help, help, uh, change some of the way that, um, you know, medicines are prescribed and just di different alternatives with our, with their, um, nutrition so um is your wife still doing paleo so yeah well she definitely got rid of the gluten she she knows that that impacts her severely i've witnessed it seen it and it, it definitely does um she is pretty much paleo um and uh, she's been kind of off and on and she's battled with some things too um, but she's actually uh, been more carnivore than anything else here with me uh, over the last two months. She's really being, been giving it an effort. And um, she really wants to see it on the scale very badly. Um, but she's not seeing it on the scale right now. She's definitely seeing it in her measurements, and, uh, which is great. And that, I, I've told her that happens to a lot of people. Um, but, but I really wish I understood more of the why behind that. Cause I know if she saw it on the scale, she would be that much more motivated, but she's about, she's about two months in very solid, um, and, um, doing great. So, um, she's not, uh, one yet to uh, talk about it, but when people start complimenting her, uh, at church and other things and notice the, the, the changes going on. You know, of course, you can't help but get motivated by that. So she's she's been doing really well with that. Um, and when when you're at church, I mean, are you kind of are you talking to people and they're kind of saying like, "What's going on? You're looking you're looking much better." You know, how do I do that? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm definitely not. I, I've tried to shorten my elevator pitch a little bit, if you will, because. <laughs> Used to when somebody would say that, I would just start blah, 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 just go crazy and and start telling them about everything. And I think they're just like, okay, hold on, wow, this is not for me. So I've had to shorten my elevator pitch a little bit and just kind of go in a little bit less aggressively. But the friend of mine who introduced me to Carnivore, uh, his name is Chris. He he actually also goes to our church, and we were part of a men's group at that time that uh, was getting together on a pretty regular basis. And we were very open and talked about it because there were many times we'd get together and. Uh, go out to eat or, or or whatever else and so yeah he and i it was nice to be able to have him as a partner in crime during this but um he's a great guy um he's in the behavioral health sector and um he's he's done a lot of making a lot of change and impact on especially in kids lives and very much incorporates uh, nutrition into that as well so he's really loved that um the pathway that dr Ede is doing and some of those others about you know the behavioral health stuff that that has a, such an impact so it's uh he's he's been side by side with me on on this and we've definitely made some influences there and had a lot of people asking what's going on which is very very cool so just hope to be an example and an influence and when we can be hopefully other people will continue to ask questions and we'll continue to share yeah how are you eating day to day now? Um, I really have have come back into where I almost got down to what my goal weight was. I, I actually reached 180, which was my high school weight that I can remember. And um, at that point, I did start going back to more two meals a day. I was doing pretty much OMAD and I was just fine with it. Very, very uh, satiated. Didn't really need more than that. And I went back to two meals a day for a little while. And I've kind of just seen my weight kind of fluctuate a little bit up and down, but one to two meals a day, uh, usually a ribeye. I'm fortunate to live in Texas, so we get a lot of good deals on uh, um, on the, the steak. And when ribeyes go on sale, I, I buy a bunch of it. I have a vacuum sealer. I seal them up, and throw them in the, in the freezer, and, and we've had a good steady diet of, uh, of steak. I'm also, I love my smoked meat, so I'll smoke a lot of brisket and do a lot of things on, on the smoker. Um, but it's all meat based and 
stay. I, I, what, I think what people initially came at me with was that the expense of it. Right. And I've just absolutely shot that, shoot that down real quick. Being in Texas, I can tell, uh, tell them very, very quickly that I can have a ribeye steak every single night, which is amazing to me and do it for about $8. If I go to any fast food chain and get a fast food meal, I'm spending 13 to $15. And so for almost half the price, I'm eating a ribeye steak. I mean, that's a pretty convincing argument when somebody says it's too expensive. So, and then I start telling them about all the other stuff that I don't eat. I don't, you know, I don't do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm not snacking all throughout the day. So all the other money that I'm saving throughout it, it's, it's pretty easy to, to win that argument when you're talking about expenses. I think people just don't realize it because they think I got to spend $50 for ribeye at a restaurant. You don't, especially when you cook a ribeye every day for a year, you get pretty good at cooking them. And I, I'd take my ribeye over the restaurants any day of the week. <laughs> So uh, on that point, um, you're not thinking about food as much. You probably, as a result, not spending as much time in the kitchen or as much time yeah. in convenience stores and that kind of thing. Um, there's no snacking. So do you feel like you've got back a lot of time since you went? Oh, for the sure. Point? Oh, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Now, I'm still the chef in our family. So um, I do. I do. And, and because I pretty much cook the protein, I cook the meat for everybody. And so... Um, my wife and my daughter fend for themselves a little bit. My daughter's not fully, she's eating so, so much better. Um, but she's not fully carnivore or anything, but she, she kind of fends for herself with the rest of it. So I cook a lot in bulk on, on the weekends. We kind of make a lot of the meals for the, the rest of the week so that everybody's got something, but I end up cooking, you know, three different, you know, we cook three different types of proteins all to get us through the week. Um, you know, hamburgers and, um, you know, bacon's a staple. So we always have some bacon available eggs usually an egg, uh, egg casserole for the morning, something like that. And so we're all fed for the week. And then it's just everybody fending for themselves to eat, eat the meal. So it's been nice to be able to cook a steak for both my wife and I each night. And we're that sounds around. super efficient. Yeah. You should be a project manager the way you're, you're getting all the, the, <laughs> the food ready. Yeah. Yeah. I just find it easier to, uh, to do all at once. And, uh, I've got, you know, we've got some of our staples that we cook all at once. So you can have multiple things going at once and, and prepare it all and, uh, you know, portion it out. Some, we're not as strict as some people do the whole portion control and weigh everything out. We just, you know, Ziploc bags, containers, we throw it in the refrigerator and take, portion it out as we need it. Mm. I think, well, that's one of the good things about carnivore as well. You don't have to worry about the sizes as, as much you, know, you don't have to think about oh am i having too much fat or am i having too much of this or that you know yeah i've never measured macros and if i did if that was something that was required i probably wouldn't have been successful on it because i'm you know i'm i don't know enough about that if somebody says just just eat beef butter bacon and eggs all right i can do that but if somebody says you got to measure out this much of beef this much of butter this much of it i wouldn't have done it and so i love the simplicity that you can have success uh, of course those who do get into all that and the macros i know there's a lot more you can probably do with tweaking and try and figure out exactly what's right for your body and as you progress you can get into that but to start out and to make all the changes and what so many people feel is being restricted from not having all the carbs and sugars if you had to measure all the portions just like the, the whole weight watchers program things like that if you're counting all of that it's just it's too much for me too time consuming i would have never done it one of your friends uh, comes to you and says, "Look, I I want to I want to get results like you're getting, but I'm just not sure about this carnivore thing. You know, what would you say to them to convince them that this is the way to go?" Well, I love that there's so much information out there, and so I didn't talk about this, but when I first found out I had had diabetes, I looked for that magic pill. I didn't want to go on medicine. But I did scour the internet and like, what can I do to reverse type 2 diabetes? And if you just punch in reverse type 2 diabetes, you get a whole slew of solutions and pill bottles and magic pills that they'll send you. And I bought a bunch of them trying to find the one that worked for me. And I never found anything that was successful. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but um, I didn't find anything that was successful. So the first thing that I would do to say that person is I do steer them back to the people that, that I saw success with. So the Dr. Berries, the Dr. Chafees, the, the, the ones that have the MD behind their name because that that's respected, right? So it's, a, it's my doctor says I really shouldn't eat all this red meat. 
Well, when you have another doctor says you can absolutely eat all the red meat and be fine with it, um, that that weighs more than, than that, that. But I'll, I'll say those were my experts. Those are the people that I went to and I had to watch a lot of their videos and I had to study it and I had to get to where I trusted that. But then I go back to the comments and I point back to the comments. I said, not only do you, are you seeing my results, but I can point you to my brother. I can point you to my parents. I can point you to all the, my family members that have had the success. And then just look at this and this and this and this. And I just start give, giving an example. I said, go explore it yourself. Go explore it and find out. So that's what I mean. The success stories, as, as uh, Dr. Kilt says, the documented stories, that's what that's what matters. And when you start seeing it over and over and over again, um, it's really becomes undeniable. It really does. That's the thing. I mean, the, you know, like every other diet out there, there's, you know, 90% of the people that be writing about the diets, probably more than that would be saying, well, this doesn't work, or I tried this and I didn't have success, or I tried this and it was okay for two weeks. And then I started putting weight back on or something. Yeah. Carnivore seems to be the only one where, you know, 100% of the time, it's the opposite. It's like, I'm, this is great. Feel better than I ever have before, you know, never going back. Yeah. And then all you start hearing about when you start digging in, all of these people who have had the success. I mean, look how many YouTube channels have popped up. Look at how many things are going on where people just want to talk about it and want to tell you about it after they've had that success, right? And then people start realizing, wow, this also, wait, I got rid of my snoring. I got rid of like all these weird, strange uh, things that start happening. You're like, there's no way that can all be related to the diet. And you start finding out more and more that is true. Uh, I mean, your your story of, of vision and, and and that impacting on your eyes and things, it just blows me away. When you hear different things, you think, oh, that, that should have nothing to do with correcting and healing in your diet. But we're just learning more and more that it absolutely does. Um, it's amazing to me. I, I think um, just as you were saying that, I had another thought there. Like, you know, if someone said to if you were doing some kind of calories in calories out diet or something you know someone says to you oh you've lost a couple of pounds recently haven't you you're looking a bit better like the the response would be more like uh oh you're reminding me i'm hungry and you know the response might be a kind of a look yeah. down and oh yeah i've lost some weight but then if you said that to a carnivore the response would be bright eyes and oh okay let me tell you what's happened <laughs> Well, exactly. And, and the other thing that, that weighs into that, too, I, I mean, I'm just going to say with with you talk about people at church, we, there was a there was a pretty good movement of a particular diet that was going through our church there for a little while. And some, you know, some people lost a considerable amount of weight. And so it started catching on because, the, you know, especially the ladies, they were noticing that. And so they, they each wanted to do that. Um sadly, almost every one of those have got back, back up to their original weight, at least visually, right? It, it, it kind of looks that way because it was expensive. It was high monthly cost. It was a lot of measuring. It was a lot of tracking stuff and it, it just wasn't sustainable. And I think that's one of the biggest things about a carnivore diet. It's very sustainable. Um, it's a, it's a way of life. And once you get used to that and you get over the sugar addictions, those cravings are gone. Um, not completely, you know, I would sure probably love to have, have something, but I look at the donuts, the things that I used to just like not be able to pass up. Like if it was there, I ate it. Um, but now I'd look at that completely different It's almost poison to my body. I don't want it. I have no desire to have it. And that's, what's remarkable to me is I, I used to have, I used to be the guy in the office that got made fun of. Like if there was free food out, that was my weakness. They, they always said, all right, Ashley will finish it off, you know, or if there was extra breakfast burritos, give them to Ashley. If there was extra something that brought in, I was the one who took care of it. So, you know, that was, I was known in the office for that. Um, so, you know, to, to be able to like completely walk past that, that table of, of breakfast donuts and um, breakfast burritos and whatever it is, and just not even have a temptation on it is that's, what's remarkable to me. I mean, it's just, it's crazy how how much I've changed in that manner, and it's taken time. Yeah. So, sky's the limit. How much money would you accept to go back to a regular diet? That's a good question, Dave. Because I don't want to sound like like give you the answer of it's priceless, but you know, I, to me, my health is not worth it. I've been down the road 
to where I was scared for my life. Um, and some people have to hit that rock bottom and further rock bottom to make those kind of changes. But I had always, I grew up um, in a healthy home. My, my mother was one of the few who didn't allow us to have the sugary breakfast cereals. Um, you know, and she really tried to keep us away from a lot of that. But when I moved to college and I got off my own, I went crazy. And it was like, oh, sugar, 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 whatever I wanted to eat, I did. And that's where I really kind of lost control of things. But I was always athletic. I was always active. And it just never really impacted me um, because my body, my metabolism, everything else, I was younger. I was okay. But when I started to get 40 and it started impacting me, I had to make some life decisions. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to God that it did. I mean, that it, was, it was revealed to me that if you don't make some changes, you're going to have a, you're going to have one of these, um, you know, the rest of your life is going to be on medications and doing all the things that I just didn't want to be a part of. So I've got a beautiful, um, uh, 15 year old daughter and, uh, that of course, eight years ago, she's one of my main motivations that I'm not, I, I don't plan on, on leaving the earth early, God willing, I'll stay. I want to be part of her life if, as long as I'm here on this earth. And, um, um, you know, it, I needed to change. I needed to get, get healthy. And I feel like I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I, I tell people all the time that I feel like I'm back in my thirties again, and I'm, I'm, I'm approaching 50 and I feel 30. And, and that's, what's crazy. That's what's crazy. Um, okay. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel? How can we find you and what kind of videos have you got on there? Yeah, it's, um, it's carnivore brothers uh, on YouTube. Um, and then, Rhett and I both post our own videos uh, We because we live so far apart. It's very rare that we've been able to be together. Um, but we so we post some of our own videos. And I think that's probably confused some people. So I'm Carnival Brothers Ashley. He's Carnival Brothers Rhett. Um, and when we go on, we separate our names out when we're on the chat and stuff like that. Because uh, a lot of people are like, well, is this Ashley or Rhett? So, um, but we just, we, we, we do it as we motivate each other. And it's been fun to do some live streams and some interviews and stuff like that together. Um, and, uh, we definitely enjoyed that. And part of it's a motivation thing for each other and, and holding each other accountable. Um, but, uh, I've really made some changes and we both made some changes on, on what we're wanting to do with it, uh, in this year. And, and a lot of that is, is, is trying to get more involved with, um, you know, the healing humanity movement and just the, for me, type two diabetes and really trying to get some more educational materials out on that. So, the first year was really kind of documenting our journey. Um, we both love to cook. We love to smoke meats. We love to do that kind of stuff. So we posted a lot of recipe type videos. And, you know, um, I'm really surprised because I grew up cooking steaks. I worked in a steakhouse, so I've always cooked steaks. But there are a lot of people who don't know how to cook a steak or they're intimidated by it. So just the simplicity of it, um, taking meats and, and, and taking a big chuck eye, for example, buying it for inexpensive and breaking that down. I've done some videos on that, how to do that with fillets and chuck eyes and things like that and get less expensive meat and break them down into steaks yourself and things like that. So you'll see more of that on our channel. That's really what we're, we're trying to show. Um, and then you're hopefully this next year, you'll, we'll see a lot more of the uh, community involvement. Um, it's probably one of the biggest things that, that if I, if the other piece when you asked me earlier about what will I tell somebody get involved in the community, just like anything else, if you're involved, uh, with your church group, with your, you know, at school, whatever it is, the more you're involved, the more you're invested in it. And just like carnivore, if you're not involved and you're trying to out, be out there and do it on your own, you probably won't have success. But when you're involved in a community and you're, you're doing these kind of conversations or you're listening to the YouTube videos or you're on a, on a Facebook page, there's so many good community groups that are out there. Um, I think that's a key to sustaining and getting through the difficulties um and um i i just i want to be more involved with that and we've got some plans in the works of how we're going to be more involved in some communities and some uh, platforms that are coming out soon hopefully that we'll be able to make some announcements on and, and we're definitely going to be involved in that nice well i'll link to your channel below and actually i really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story thank you so much for your time you're, you're very welcome and can i make one more plug um if because of time time related stuff we want to make sure anybody who knows about it and to try and spread the word but at the end of this month we've got hack your health in austin texas i'm going to that so i'm hoping to meet a lot of other carnivores there i'm super super excited about that's that community piece that i'm super excited about 
the picture behind me. Sorry, I got to figure out which way to lean. That was at a meetup that I went to on, if you know, Carnivore Soldier. That was in Austin, Texas. That my dad and that's my dad and me. And um, um, I just love going to these meetups and meeting people in person. So we've got Hack Your Health at Austin. And then we've got a couple of really cool events. And we just started publishing our meetup that we're doing with the uh, Healing Humanity documentary. We've got limited amount of tickets for sale. We're doing it as a fundraiser. And so um, I'll try and get the information so we can post that on the video there too for anybody who's interested in that and some other big announcements that are coming really soon for the end of the month. So stay tuned to the channels on that. We're super excited about some of these events that are coming up.